Hey guys, YouTuber100 here. Alright, and now here I am to finish up my series of videos of my you know, my thoughts on, on Christmas Carol adaptations. And I'm going to finish this off by talk, going over the 2009 Christmas Carol. So... Yeah, people seem to be kind of mixed about this. I mean, some people have said they love this version, and others have just kind of said that they really aren't that crazy for it. For it, and it's really like not one of the greatest Christmas Carol adaptations. And I probably agree that it, well, it's not really like that great, of like it's not really the greatest Christmas Carol adaptation of all time. I mean, it is like. It does still, like, there are good things about it, like, I guess overall, while it is kind of like a hit and miss film, I would say that it is still, like, overall a decent film. I mean, it, you know, I really don't think it's, like, horrible or anything. Like, I mean, there are, like, some, a lot of things that are really, like, over the top about it, and at times it can just get really goofy, but what it does, like, do right, I mean, it is, like, done really good. Yeah, so, yeah, this film is obviously was is directed by Robert Zemeckis, and Robert Zemeckis was also the one who did the Polar Express. And yeah, in this film, you of course like have Jim Carrey as Scrooge, and Jim Carrey also voices on like the three go the the three spirits. And it also has like Gary Oldman and Bob Hoskins in it. And, yeah, they will all voice multiple characters in this film. And I've noticed that this really seems to be something that really goes on with Robert Zemeckis' films. I mean, it just makes me question what the budget for Robert Zemeckis' films really are. Because in The Polar Express, like, Tom Hanks was voicing a lot of different characters in the film. And that's the case here. Like, Jim Carrey is voicing four characters. Gary Oldman's voicing three, Bob Hoskins is voicing two. And so, yeah, I mean, they're act they're voicing multiple characters in this film. It makes me really question, like, was, was Robert Zemeckis just, like, have kind of, like, a smaller budget than a lot of other directors do, and he just, like, is unable to hire different actors to voice parts, and he needs to have the cast members he does have to voice multiple characters I mean that was really what makes me kind of question Robert Zemeckis I mean this is the like director of Back to the Future I mean and Back to the Future I mean that series is like one of the most famous film series of all time you'd figure Robert Zemeckis would like be have like a crap ton of money to do the stuff that he does but he just like has his actors voice different multiple characters in the films so yeah I mean, there's, there's that but, I mean, yeah, Jim Carrey overall, he doesn't really do that bad as Scrooge. I mean, Jim Carrey, I think he's just fine in the role of Scrooge. Ooh, yeah, I mean, yeah, in fact, this Scrooge, this isn't even one of the really the most over-the-top Scrooges at all. I mean, Albert Finney's version is really, like, much more over-the-top than Jim Carrey is here. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, the... It, like I said before, it does have some pretty, like, goofy moments, like, the stuff with Jacob Marlowe, like, his, like, his jaw, like, is dislocated or something, and then he's just, like, goofing around with his jaw, like, at first just, like, muttering and just, like, playing with his jaw, and then, like, he tries to fix it and just, like, his lips are sealed together and stuff. So, yeah, I can get over the top at times, and, yeah, I watched a Sasha Critics Disney summer review for this movie, and he said that parts like that can, like, be really, like, eye-rolling, and, yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, it's just, like, really goofy and over the top and just dumb, to be honest. And, yeah, there are, like, some other things about it, too, like, the Ghost of Christmas Present, like, his constant laughter, I mean... He just laughs way too much in the film, to be honest, and it's honestly kind of distracting. Yeah. And plus, the film also has, like, a 
it's really dark too. I mean, you have like that scene where the ghost of Christmas present fades away, and just like you keep hearing the sound of the bell tolling, and it shows like the ghost of Christmas present, and showing Scrooge ignorance and want, and then like ignorance and want just like become mentally insane as the bell is tolling, and the ghost of Christmas present just starts to laugh and begins aging, and then his the ghost of Christmas present just like like turns into like dust and it just sh like shows his skeleton there <laughs> laughing before completely fading away like I think that's how she could have put it best the fuck yeah and yeah the ghost of Christmas past uh well the design overall it does look pretty interesting like this time the ghost of Christmas past is really just kind of like a fiery type of figure you're in kind of like a mix of a fire you're an angel type of spirit and but I mean you know uh, the voice just really doesn't work and uh yeah I really wouldn't say this is really the greatest design of the ghost of Christmas past overall although yeah once again this just shows the same stuff I talked about before in Scrooge's past he's in his school by himself, and then his sister comes to take him home and all that stuff, and then shows him at Fezzy Wigs and stuff, and then he he has a love interest, Belle, and she eventually leaves him and stuff. Yeah, it just has everything that I've talked about out in the previous versions. Yeah. Yeah. And... One of the really good thing, one of the good things I really do like about this is, like, when the Ghost of Christmas Present is showing, is like transporting Scrooge around to show him like the positions that, like Cratchit is in and like Fred and stuff. I mean, while they never actually do leave the room, whom Scrooge met the ghost in, it just shows like, like, the visions of like. Like, the Ghost of Christmas Present just, like, transporting Scrooge from, like, around the town and shows him the situations that his counterparts are in and stuff. Yeah. yeah, so that was, like, a really good effect, really. And also, like, another really creative thing about this is they show the Ghost of Christmas Future, and the Ghost of Christmas Future is really just, like, lit the shadow of Scrooge. Like, the Ghost of Christmas Future is actually just, like, basically in the shadow of Scrooge, and that's how the Ghost of Christmas Future is really directing Scrooge. And then, eventually, like, like the ghost just uh, pops out from the shadow and just, like, jumps near Scrooge. So, yeah, a pretty creative way for the Ghost of Christmas Future. And, like, Nostalgia Critics talked about before, I mean... Mm, this movie, like, has one of the most effective if, moments in any Christmas Carol adaptation when it shows, like, the death of Tiny Tim and Cratchit is just, like, trying to hide his real, real pain from his family, but then it shows, like, him stopping on the stairs right in front of Scrooge's face, and Scrooge is just seeing, like, the pain in Cratchit's face and yeah it's just like a real unbelievable moment and yeah it is really like one of the best best show own moment in like any of the Christmas Carol adaptations it's probably the most effective if scene of that moment in any Christmas Carol adaptation and then, yeah, the Ghost of Christmas Future eventually does show Scrooge that he'll die also. Oh, and apparently, like, this film actually shows that it was actually Christmas Day that Scrooge died on. <laughs> and, like, the Ghost of Christmas Future was, like, just, just causing a storm to basically just blow Scrooge into his grave. And once again, like, just like in the Mickey version, it was showing that Scrooge was... His grave was basically, like, down towards the fires of hell. 
fell and then it like was just showing and then Scrooge eventually like just beginning to fall down toward his casket and then he just ended up right back into his bedroom. Yeah, and yeah, this and it just has just about everything in that I've talked about in the other adaptations where he then wakes up on Christmas Day and then he sends that small boy to go after the big turkey for Cratchit and his family. Then he sends the turkey over to Cratchit's. And then, yeah, it shows Scrooge accepting Fred's invitation to Christmas dinner. Here. And once again, this film waits until the next day for Scrooge to actually, like, reveal his change of heart to Cratchit. And, and then, yeah, and this film at the end, it actually does, like, show that Cratchit is the one that's actually, like, giving that ending narration about how what Scrooge really did and for Tiny Tim. Him and just saying how Scrooge did become a second father to Tiny Tim. Him and Tiny Tim would live. If, and then Scrooge treated everyone with kindness and generosity and compassion. And now embodies the spirit of Christmas. And, and it just once again had Tiny Tim saying his famous line, God bless us everyone. So... Yeah, it, it is, like, overall, I would probably say, it is, like, I'd say overall, probably a good film. Not a great film, and definitely, like, not one of the greatest adaptations of the story, but overall, it is a, it's a decent film. So, yeah, it's probably really not a version that people really would really, like, get that interest did overall in seeing more versions, versions, but I mean, in there will, there are like things that people really will enjoy about this, and as I said before, and like Nostalgia Critic has said, it really does like overall have some of the best scenes of certain parts of the story that really are in any Christmas Carol adaptation. So yeah, yeah. So if that really does does like make you want to watch this film at all I mean you'll yeah I think overall if you're looking for or like something enjoyable to watch around the holidays not something that really would like probably get your interest in watching every year but if, if it is like something that you would want to watch during the holidays this will probably be something good for you to watch like from time to time during the holidays all right so yeah I guess that's all I really have to say about 2009 version of Christmas Carol. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys really did enjoy this series that I did on the, the various adaptations of A Christmas Carol. Also, yeah, if there's any version that I didn't talk about in the series that you really did enjoy, yeah, tell me, like, what your favorite adaptations of A Christmas Carol are, and if I didn't, like talk about it in this series all right so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and this series of christmas carol thoughts videos all right and i hope you all have a merry christmas this this wherever you are whether you're celebrating it at home whether you're out with family whether wherever you are i hope you have a merry christmas to all of you all right so Alright, so thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Merry Christmas. And, alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.